Pushed to our limits, we picked ourselves up as we tried to regroup and figure out everything that happened in our struggle. While Hecht appeared to be back to her normal self, she had insisted on taking Noalia's head for confirmation. Then when Noalia's head did roll, I realized something was off and examined the corpse to discover that more extensive study at my lab could unearth the formula to Noalia's transformation and how to possibly brew potions of mythic power. Though during this turn of events, Uxio checked on Lyri to find that she had completely lost her motivation to continue Noalia's work and would resign herself to community service in Sandpoint. After everyone gathered all the loot in Noalia's chambers, including a second Sahedron amulet, we moved to rest in the officer's quarters for the night. I could definitely use some sleep after these close calls. Ugh, my freaking body. Upon returning to the floor where Bethesda was exploded, the angels decided to investigate the area before planning a night's watch and sleeping arrangement. Luckily, Orc offered to assist with pointing out bedrooms and volunteered to keep watch where everyone slept. The following morning, we continued to... What about all the night events that we're not going to... <laughs> The following morning, we continued to search the basements for the rune well by proceeding through the other door. Who wrote the script? Through that door and the secret passage to their left, we quickly found the Sahedron door leading to the Thistletop rune well. Unfortunately, we were surprised, based upon entering, to find a mighty bar guest. What's a bar guest? Ugh, a bar guest waiting for, for the freedom to run wild and slaughter. Empowered with mythic strength and resistance, the bar guest proved to be even stronger than Nualia, and nearly killed Ranruo with its vorpal jaws. All seemed lost, but then the mythic angels of Sandpoint rallied together and ended the bar guest's wrath. Even in the wake of such a victory to claim the rune well, I found there was a dangerous amount of mythic power surging into my amulet from both the Bargast and the Runewell. I really had to move quick, because the thing was going to explode. I had to give myself and Uxio mythic power in order to avoid it. But with that, my amulet transformed into a new material. Right now, how many wrath points are you sitting on total? I uh, still have 32. Okay. All right. Stuart, to the other players, this point going forward, in terms of advancing mythic ranks, because you all kind of have your own, like, paths to power, essentially the necklace is going to do different things. I know we talked about that outside of the stream, but people watching should probably know that too. We also got a second of those Sahedrons, which Runra is holding on to. Yeah. Can we determine that one didn't do anything? Mm -hmm. oh, last, last we it hasn't done anything do yet. Has not. It, it helped open the door, and I had attempted to see if it was going to interact with Bellas, but it did not. Correct. While the rune well was being drained. Correct. It does, however, give you the basic Sahedron rune uh, yes. benefits, which is plus one to all your saving throws and usage of false life. Okay. That's pretty huge. So, we're going to assume that this is, like, shortly after killing the Bargast. You guys are there. What What's the plan right now? <laughs> Mind if I RP a little bit of how I feel like Uxio's primordial sturdiest would work. Sure. How, how's that going? Upon receiving that power, all the blood on the floor starts oozing towards him. Like, from the Bargus, from the other pl players, it's all oozing towards him and seeping into his wounds to close them. You know what? I'm into it. 
Yeah, that's that's that, cool. I like that. That's how it works. That list still got a number of rounds of that. We'll say five rounds left, so we'll have her gain thirty. What's the rest of the party doing then? We're going to assume you guys like sit down to take a breather at least. Oh, uh, definitely. Everyone who's not dead, say I. I. Uh... <laughs> it's always a fun sound off. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Omega didn't say it. She did. I just didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> She just kind of collapses on the ground with you guys and takes out some, like, jerky and just starts munching mm. on it. She'll then give a quick wave and says, I, I suggest we take a quick lunch. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. Fair enough. Maybe in the other room. Any points towards the door just so that we're not sitting right at the edge of the goddamn rune well, drained or not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I don't want to be wondering what the side effects are one second uh, i mean uh, was there anything else in here they didn't really have a chance to look you did not uh maybe perhaps uh do mm -hmm. some checks okay yeah busting out that magnifying glass one second <laughs> oh yeah that magnifying glass <laughs> <laughs> that magnifying glass is gonna turn into our magla and just give them oh special my powers God. grappling hook <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll join in on the perception check. I I need a graphic of Zerdan like holding it up, like Link getting a new item. Like <laughs> da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna say Uxio, since you're all like primordialing right now, and you got some <laughs> vampire stuff happening right now. You sniff, and your vampire eyes see behind you. Ooh. Wait, as in like over. Oh, yep, yeah, apparently. Oh. Some secret rooms. Oh. Oh. Okay. That. <sighs> this is either going to be far more traps or maybe something worthwhile. All right. I guess I'll take point. Okay. Sure, I'm still healing. You guys check the. They're basically closets, they're glorified closets. Okay. Oh. In each of them are 15 candles. Your general knowledge and know-how and, like, just, you know, you know, adventuring stuff. You know mm -hmm. that these are eternal candles. Each one is basically a, a very minor magic item. And when you light them, they give off heat and light similar to a continual flame. Ooh. Wait. So is it's that... basically ever-burning torch in candle form. Yep. But like the light given off is not that, not that insane. They're basically right. like religious decorations. Hmm. Each of them are worth about twenty five bucks and a GP. Oh, I mean that's definitely worth selling. How many it did was you each one had fifteen? So that means thirty 30, total, right? Thirty total. Yep. Thirty total. So twenty five times fifty nine times thirty. That would be seven hundred and fifty. That's a lot. That's some coin right there. Yeah, that's something. The last thing that you find, though, I'm going to say for thematic reasons, Bella, you find it. There's a small coffer with a Sahedron rune on it. That's like a box, right? Yep. I is it basically a lock it. box? It is not locked. Inside is a small ring with the Sahedron rune on it. Interesting. Can I... Can uh, the group Arcana that? You absolutely can. Mm -hmm. Arcana. Nope. 30, 20. Uh, Ryan Rua, would you like an uh, expert opinion on this? I'm fine. Oh my god. You know what? I'm not even paying attention to this, to this coffer. You determine that it is, in fact, a ring that has a slight evocation enchantment on it. Mm. You cannot tell immediately what it is without trying to put it on. It doesn't seem cursed or openly bad, especially since, you know, it, uh, based on where it was put. Okay. I think well, Bella will probably put it on then. All right, you put it on, and manifesting in front of you is a force shield. It is a ring of force shield, and the projection is in the shape of a Sahedron rune. So while equipping it, 
it gives you a plus two AC bonus, as if you were equipped with a heavy shield. Nice. Nice. That's very nice for someone using a two-handed weapon. That is all that you immediately find in the room. You will also pretty much determine that since you've drained the rune well, there's no real risk in this room either, so camping out in here is not a terrible idea if you mm -hmm. want to do that. Okay. I, mean, I think that... Uh, the implication. Hmm? I think that Ronro would kind of be uh, looking at the Sahedrin that she picked up and also looking at the rune well and, and just having that expression of disappointment. <laughs> You equip a disappointed face. Yes. <laughs> Does anyone else want to do anything? Do you want to... Essentially, my question is, do you just want to take a breather and burn some healing spells, or do you want to take a long rest? Well, I do have, like, one more healing potion that anyone can use, if... But... Oh, yes. Give that over here. That'll be just a great idea. I know you can't drink it, Uxio. Jeez. Uxio. I'm just... Uxio. Oh. Oh, I don't... Do you need some assistance? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Uxio. Do you need healing? I'll stick with what's currently happening. Why are you cowering in the corner? Why are you running away from Why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? <laughs> This, this, voice, this voice reminds me of I'm such an old candy. Yo. <laughs> oh my god. Uxio, you, you know I don't need character, we're all giggling at this. Uxio, you do know that I have a bit of range with this touch attack. Just take a few bits of healing. <laughs> To be actually, to be fair, like Uxia would be healed. Almost, you got primordial sturdiness, right? Yeah, I wasn't sure how many rounds had already gone. Oh yeah, by by the time like Uxia's wounds are actually mm. sealed and they're not really doing anything. Fair so enough. I'm now at fifty two as opposed to five. Yep. Wow, that was so fun to do. <laughs> no, that was a cute moment. Amiko offers Zerdan a healing touch if you want it. I don't see why not, so... Oh, hot diggity. Amiko will also offer Ranrua a quick heal. Okay, good. Nine? Nine from that. Okay. That at least looks a little better. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, again, the big question is, do we want to keep going, or do you guys want to camp mm -hmm. out? Do you want to... What is the group consensus? I think uh, if we're going to actually camp, we should get back to the barracks. I think it would be a bit of a waste of resources to camp right now since it hasn't been that long since we actually woke up. I agree with Uxio. If we're going to keep exploring, let's keep exploring. Otherwise, let's get out of here, get with the rest of the units, and then explore it with the full force. Right, and I'm sure Larry and Oric are wanting to get out of somewhere that's not littered with goblin corpses and God knows Screaming what else. goblin children in cages. Yeah, we should get those out too, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure someone will take care of it. I feel like everyone just gives Ramrua a no look. <laughs> well, maybe not hacked. Maybe just a finger wag. Okay, so... Yeah, why don't we just Ooh. take a quick peek through these doors real quick before we go. All right. While he's checking that one, I'm going to check the north one. Absolutely. All right, Uxio. Um, <laughs> Uxio C. Stewart. <laughs> you're pretty I sure. I appeared through the veil. You're pretty sure it's a door. You're pretty sure it's a door. You're pretty sure it's also not booby trap, so you just kind of open it. Open it. All right. This barren room contains an upraised dais in which it sits on a marble throne. To either side stand statues of a man clutching a book and a glaive. A ghostly figure seems to be sitting on the throne. So on this throne, there appears to be a ghostly figure. Ooh. Closed door. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Let me, give me a second before you close it. It is an image of the same man who appears in the statues. He seems to be addressing an audience as he moves his hands about, fingers decorated with hooked rings. 
but the words issuing from this phantom mouth are difficult to make out and in a strange language. Ooh. Closing the door still seems like a good idea since I don't think any of us have oh. ways to fight ghost. Wait a minute. Is this <clears throat> audible at all? It is audible, but it's in... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what do you speak again? I don't suppose that's Thessalonian at all, is it? It sure is! <laughs> oh boy! That is Bella also speaks Thessalonian. Okay. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Mm. Uh, the words being spoken over and over, it's like a damaged recording tape. So the words are in Thessalonian and repeat the following short message over and over. It is upon us, but I command you to remain. Witness my power. How Aslantis' petty wrath is but a flash compared to my strength. Take my final work to your graves, and let its memory be the last thing you... And then it restarts. Oh, wait. Did he say something about Aslanti? Yep. Or Aslant. Oh. Aslanti. Or Alasnist. Alas oh, Alasnist. Oh. God, I hate <clears throat> I will say I hate, hate Pathfinder names sometimes. So, hooked rings and... Anything else on this figure? Well, he's carrying a book and a um, and a glaive. Is there anything distinct about the book? It does not actually say in my setting, but I'm pretty sure it's a Sahedrin rune. I don't suppose we could possibly roll knowledge on this. Maybe history, maybe? It absolutely would be history, correct. 27 total. You're fairly certain that's another the rune lord, like giving this message. Do an arcana check. All right, an arcana check. A twenty win. Okay, you have a feeling, like just based on this ghostly image that's repeating the same message over and over, you think that this is some kind of communication room, and this is a message being sent from a long distance away, but. Considering it's a rune lord, it's probably ancient, and it's been playing for centuries. Oh god. Especially since it mentions Aslantis by name. Or as... Oh, right. Atlant Alasnist. Alas god, oh. I hate these names. Yeah. Thessalonian names, because they're just an offshoot of Aslant, and still pompous. Yep, yeah, uh, he seems full of himself. Also, you do know that all the rune lords carried glaives, so that's a thing. Or some sort of pole arm, right? Yeah, usually. Because Elasnist had ran sewers, and this guy's actually carrying like a bladed glaive. All right. I'll take note and writing that down. Would you like to check this room? I mean, yeah. assuming there's nothing immediate, we didn't, we didn't see it. If there is, yeah, unfortunately, you did not really see it. I mean, like you, you search the room, kind like you, you glance at the room. I'm just gonna tell you the book doesn't have anything in here. Okay. What about this one? Well, you didn't find any traps. Okay. Survey says, click, 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 click. Oh. All right. Opening up the door. The door opens, you hear a... Well, you just see inside. <laughs> this room contains three low tables, their tops covered with strange and chilling selection of tools, saws, and long-bladed knives, and objects Ooh. whose purpose is not readily apparent. A strange collection of bones lies near the southern table here. Too many to be one skeleton, but too few to be two. Okay, I guess I'll try to take a look. One second. All right, you walk into the room, and it's very apparent just by the dank smell, dust, and emptiness that no one's been in here for a very long time. But this is a gross room where bodies were dragged and, and things were, like, things were cut away and experimented on a, 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 to some degree. Or at the very uh, least played with by some monster. Jeez. Okay, and... All right, I guess there's nothing here as... Well, I mean, that's not necessarily okay. the case. I'm just saying that, like, I, I'm just presenting you the room as is. Just tell me what you mm -hmm. want to do. All right. I guess I'll come through looking over the tables, trying to see if there's any sort of record or something to 
Because I'm pretty sure... Any kind of documents? That'll be a perception search or arcana, actually. Okay. God, okay. You We're search... not rolling hot. Yeah, no. Not not a good day for Zerdan. That's a tool. Mm -hmm. You search the room, and it seems like this was... Based on what you could immediately tell with no one else's input, probably some kind of torture chamber. There's just body parts strewn everywhere, but that have degraded into bones and bone meal over time. The only thing left in here is a very exquisite-looking dagger on one of the tables. Hey, uh, could I get a spellcaster in here with some sort of detect magic? Cause... Uh, let me try. Let's see, I have the magical protection. You scan the room, and the entire room, particularly the bodies, have faint traces of transmutation magic on them. If you want, you can do an Arcana check. Aha! Uh -huh. 26! Oh yeah. Not uh, bad. Yeah, this is, this is textbook villainy 101. Rather than a torture room, this was actually a transmutation experimental room. <sighs> like, the bodies were cut off and transmuted into other things and attempted to be reattached. On the table, you find surgical equipment, including, like, some scalpels, some sewing equipment, you know, that kind of stuff. Everything you need to Frankenstein your own monster. Exactly. Regrettably, though, the only thing left worthwhile in this room is that dagger. It does not appear to be magical, but it does appeal to be a wickedly curved, like, carving knife, and on the pommel is a gold and silver seven-pointed star. Fancy. Rodra does like that kind of curvy dagger. I feel like you're signing us up for something. <laughs> Rodra is going to look at Zerdan and say, You really do not want the details of this place. I'm sure it wasn't anything pleasant. Oh, absolutely not. Alright, Rainbow, we'll get on the table, hand me the dagger, and we'll perform the ritual. <laughs> Uh, take the dagger. Kidding. Yeah. Rodra is actually going to take that dagger. Alright, handing it over. Mm -hmm. right on. Seems like there's no other rooms over here, so... It does not. Yep. The statue that was blocking your path has been removed since you guys did the coin slots. Any indication where the gold went? That would require some magic. Ella does not have that kind of magic. Same. Hmm. Uxio, traveling west, you do see a southern door. And oh. I will perception the door. Essentially, you just see uh, large double stone doors. They don't appear to be locked in any way. You could just kind of push them open. Alright, I'm willing to do that. You just said nothing about traps, and I think a 31 would find traps at our level. <laughs> <laughs> That's some metagaming bullshit right there. <laughs> but <laughs> it does not appear to be trapped as you push open the doors. And, like, you're... you're it was kind of hard to do. But, yeah, you see inside four pillars supporting a dome ceiling of this room. Several alcoves containing standard sarcophagus grace the walls. And the statue of a stern man wielding a glaive and holding a book stands at the far end of the chamber. Down here. Oh, I thought the statue was going to be this one. I, You know, I'm thinking that, and we're going to pretend that it was this. Yeah, that does seem more appropriate. Hmm. And these these ones right here, these things, they're sarcophagi. So like, mm. uh, like mummy kind of things. I'm not saying hmm. there's mummies in them. I'm just saying that, you know, if mummies had a home, it'd be in those things. Right. More ornate than a coffin. Not quite a full tomb on its own. Exactly. You guys essentially see this very large chamber. What would you like to do? Considering one, two, three, four, five, six sarcophagi, you suspect it's a crypt of cut some kind. Mm. There's one for each of us. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Somehow that feels like a bad idea to me. May no, I roll absolutely. perception to see if I spot anything in the room? Sure, absolutely. Don't I think I'll do that out. as well, since I'm right up there. Oh! Uh. Hey, hey! <laughs> Alright, you open the crypt, and your trip has been eerily quiet, 
But when you open the room and you start easing in, you can hear the whisper of moving wind as Zerdean. Oh. Do 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 do. <laughs> you find a secret door. Hey. Honestly, I was expecting like finding hidden enemies. Well, I didn't say you didn't. Oh no. Okay. Oh. Surprise. Oh. And how long has it been since that Bargus fight exactly? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of stuff is worn off by now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, most of your buffs have worn off at this point. You figure it's most likely been over a minute since Bella and I are both yeah. fully healed. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely shield boot. You, yeah, guys took, no. you guys took a breather to heal and do some things. Mm -hmm. You wrench open the secret passage, and it is a path leading down further past these crypts. I did not know that we could get much lower than this, but... Well, you can wow. always go lower. Of course you would say that. I feel uh, compelled to join Hect in that slut shame she's always doing. <laughs> Alright, so do we want to survey this room for any amount of time before we move on to the secret tunnel? I mean, I think if anything was in here, you probably saw it. I mean, yeah. I don't have x-ray vision, so... You have a magnifying glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh so my you god. you have a magnifying glass. Yes, that is a thing I have. <laughs> is there anything interesting about these sarcophagi now that we're closer? Yeah, now that you're closer and now that you're looking in, you guys look at them, and I'm going to give this to you thanks to Zerdan's Nat 20. So, in Thessalonian times, whenever they built a base like this, you're aware that the architects would be buried alive with the treasures. Wow. Mm. Ew, boy. That sounds like recipe for someone, a dead shit. Mm. It does, it does. I mean, like, when you find out about that, like, you do see, like, something out of the corner of your eye, but it's probably your imagination. Uh, where? It's where never in... your imagination. Where, which corner, exactly? Good, sir. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this corner. Matter of oh. fact, um, uh, these corners, actually. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no! Oh, Jesus Initiative, Christ, Initiative, no. roll it! <laughs> hey! Fortunately, you're nat 20, and you're very high checks. Basically, anyone that got over 25 gets to act during the surprise round. That's what even are team. these? They're I'm undead, saying, so therefore bad news. Knowledge, religion. I mean, like, and I can't even understand great. what I'm looking at. But, uh, okay, uh, I will actually... I should have had a make a rolling earlier. I just realized that. Yeah, I will knowledge religion. Barely 23 seen, on my part. Barely seen out of the corner of your eye, the wisp of shadow is vaguely humanoid <laughs> and outlined in wreaths with unholy life. A sinister shadow skirts the borders between what you see and you hear our death rattling <sighs> as hands reach out to grab you. Oh, no. Uxio, you know that these are shadows. Wait, I do? Amiko got the 21. Oh, uh, Miko knows that they're shadows. She's like, watch out, they're shadows. <laughs> Hex knows they're shadows. Hex knows they're shadows. Uh, knows, or, yeah, Zerdan knows they're shadows. Yep, 23. They are CR3, they are incorporeal, and they are bitches to deal with. And unfortunately, uh, I rolled 22, 22, and 20 on their initiative. I mean, these things are high decks, aren't they? They actually have fairly low AC. Problem is, they're incorporeal. <laughs> yep. Well, I'm thankful to have a magical weapon, at least. Yep. First How shadow, nice for you. First shadow slithers out or along the floor and then reaches Zerdan and attempts, attempts to touch your own shadow. Oh, no. Mm. Does uh, the act... touch AC work? Wait, 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 wait. Before that resolves, I'm going to attempt to uh, opportune parry of a post and attempt an attack roll to try to beat it. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Regrettably, that does not work. Well, it touches. 22 touch, I assume, hits you. Mm-hmm. Hits most anyone. You take three damage. That's... Oh, no, I'm sorry. You take three strength damage. Yeah, that's the part I was worried about. <laughs> well, um, yep. Slinking oh. beyond the corner, Hect, 
you see a clawed, shadowed hand, like, fly out of the sarcophagus and attempt to touch your plated chest. It's a hit. Do you have anything to do to stop that? I have nothing that I could do to stop that. You take six strength damage. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna suck. Bella, you're awake, and you see the shadow, like, crawl its way out of the sarcophagus. What do you do? Blood rage. <laughs> and swing at the shadow in front of me. Okay. 13 does not hit it, actually. Their AC is 15. Wait, hold up. Excuse me. It's surprise round. You beat it. You beat that one. That does hit. Very well. It is immune to all non-magical attack forms. So, oh my god, these things are ridiculous. Yeah, unfortunately, you're going to need to do some kind of magical hit, because if I recall, your axe is non-magical. I am blood raging. Yeah, Does that help? Well, let's... Do you have arcane strike? No, not yet. Darn. What level blood rager are you? Four. I mean, my weapon is being treated as good aligned because of my blood rage, so... Oh, okay. So I would think it's being treated as magical, but I can't say. Yeah, I think that would work. Yeah, that works. Okay, you're good. Um, and is it an evil outsider? It is not an evil outsider. It is a incorporeal undead. <laughs> All right, then. All right. So, 20 slashing. 20 slashing does hurt it, but because it's incorporeal, it takes half. You slam downwards with your holy wrath, just letting it fly everywhere. It destroys the sarcophagus, and the shadow, like, flies up the wall from the blowback of your attack. All right, that's my turn. Okay. It will slink down, then, and deliver a counterattack. 20 hits, I assume? Yes. Six strength damage. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Uxio, you're up. All right, so I have no idea if this would apply to counting as a magic weapon, but I'm going to start my turn with, ooh. Hmm. Sun metal. That is magic, yeah. All right, and then I'm going to move here, and uh, that probably doesn't hit, though. It does not. You could use a surge. Yeah, you could burn a surge, and you might want to consider doing that. Yeah, I'm going to. That's enough to hit it. You slice at it, which, thanks to the fire that you applied, does, in fact, disperse its form. And it, weirdly enough, the shadow alights, and it, like, shrieks, and it, like, backs off a little bit from Zerdan. It, like, grabbed his shadow, and he you saw him, like, getting feebled. <laughs> and then you, like, separated it. All right. And then I'm assuming that I don't really have any because instantaneous combat maneuver thing, but I don't think I've got any that would affect them. You you can combat maneuver. It just, uh, yeah, it may not affect them. I kind of doubt they're affected by prone, so. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything that would affect them because the only other one I can think of is grapple or disarm, and disarm won't work. Grapple's a bad idea. All right. So, yeah. Okay. Ranrue, you are up. Okay, well, I'm just going to look at uh, the shadow that's just closest to me, and uh, we're going to hit it with some acid. Okay, that's a 10 mm. to hit. The 10 is not good enough, but you may, of course, yeah. burn mythic power in order to do that. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll spend one, and it's just a d6. Plus five? Exactly enough. Whew. Okay, so that damage roll was five acid damage. And then on my next turn, it will take another round of acid damage. But we're not quite done because I have the Ultra Divine Blast. So we're going to throw another acid arrow at it. 
you actually uh, let me animate this for you you send an acid splash at it and it burns like the sarcophagus in which it's in and the shadow itself kind of like just spills out of the hole you made it seems fairly unbothered mm. what did people get on the religion check i rolled 23 I also will 23. You know that force damage is ideal when it comes to incorporeal creatures. Okay. So the saying that acid do nothing, then we're ju we're just going to go with magic missile instead. All right. It kind of spills out of it and it reaches again for Hecht and then you just kind of go no and you send out two missiles which slap it on the hands and it recoils and shrieks. Good. Bad shadow. Bad. <laughs> Bitch out. Like giving it a slap on the wrist. Yep. Seeing as this happens, Amiko charges a cure light wounds and runs towards the shadow. I believe I get a saving throw. Well, saving throw for half if she touches, but. Okay. She whips out her wand and then charges like a rapier and like stabs it and <laughs> dissipates it. Yay. Zerdan, buddy, you are enfeebled. What you doing? Well, luckily, I don't need strength for my attack rolls, because I am a master of the rapier and can use finesse and poise to deal damage. So I'm going to roll for the mithril rapier here. Mm -hmm. That's a 22 with six points of damage. Unfortunately, half to three, but All right. on this guy. Swing and a hit. Very good. Is that your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. I don't got too much else. Alright. Hecht, what you doing? Well, with my slightly drained strength, I'm going to move over next to Bella. And I shall attempt to make a slice at it with my scimitar. Okay. You are currently evil aligned, yes? Yes, I know. Okay. Um. Hmm. One moment. Well, it's a magic weapon she's got, right? I'm aware, but the thing, that doesn't matter. Oh. It's a holy scimitar, isn't it? Yep. That's oh, where the no. issue is. Oh, you have negative levels, too. Jesus. Yep. You draw your scimitar, gaining a negative level. All right, so I am at a negative level when I use it. Oh, it seems like this is probably going to be the one and only slice I do with the scimitar. Oh my god, what the f*** is this? The one yeah. only slice, and it's a goddamn crit. You know what? We take those. You, you draw the holy blade, and your desire to help your friend burns away the evil in your heart, and you're back to a paladin for the day. Oh my Ooh. goodness gracious. You slice at it, and that is enough damage. Now, it's immune to crit, but you do get 2d6 extra. Okay, 2d6. Here we go. Yay. You killed it. Well done. Nice. So does it always just do an additional 2d6 when I hit, or is that only because of... Anything it? evil. Anything, Anything evil. evil. Anything evil, Anything yeah. Anything evil. Okay. All right. The final shadow, still full of rage and fury, attacks Zerdan again. Up, oh, parry and repost. One second, because so long as I've got freaking panache to use, I can keep... Expending it, so first the attack roll. I rolled a 15. Oh my, wait, hold up. Inspiration. I can s start expending some of those to help in here. One second. <laughs> when Zerdan gets mythic ranks, he's going to be a f monster. Because, oh, like, stacking mythic surge on top of his okay. inspiration is going to be insane. 15? Meet, if it meets, it beats. Okay. Right. So... Yep. Attack deflected, and I'll proceed to roll an attack of opportunity on this thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, like, slap its hand away and then stab it. Stab that very same hand with your rapier, and you pull it to the ground. It is pinned in place for this particular animation. It is shrieking and try to pull its hand back, but you're holding it down despite your enfeebled state. Bella, you're up. You see the last shadow, like, rising from the ground, attempting to get away. Chop. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hit. 
Well, you did do half damage, and it's dead. <laughs> Angels of the crits. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah! We are the Angels of Sandpoint. At Sandpoint. With the undead expelled from the room, you guys can breathe a sigh of relief again as the, like, um... Like, essentially the negativity is left, and you can feel yourself normally uncomfortably alone, but thankfully mm -hmm. alone. Are we still under the strength penalty? Yeah. Yeah. It lasts so until so it the, heals. So the negativity has left. Does that mean that Hect does not want to slut shame room? No, that's always going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, I guess, do we want to try to heal now as opposed to possibly running into more shadows later down the line how would one heal from what's happened to you because uh, Uxio didn't get hit he just saw everyone who did get hit looking a little ragged but no actual physical wounds well here's the thing the ability damage it heals a bit slower than just trying to recover hit points and conventional cure spells don't heal that. You have to have lesser restoration or something of that effect where it actually heals the ability damage. Yeah, you get like one back a day. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. Especially mm -hmm. since me and him got hit, hit with freaking negative six. I think it was Bella that got the six. Is there anything got yeah. Oh. I got three, and even then, like, I use dex for my attack stat anyway, uh, so... Hex, Hex got six as well. Yeah, yeah I'm... I'm yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof. Yeah, this is going to be an issue, but I'm sure that... You guys, yeah. Amiko's like, do we do we want to ask like others to explore, or do we want Uxio to take point? Like, how are you uh, feeling? Uh, She'll just ask you guys directly. Well, you see aside... me drop my heavy shield because I can no longer carry it because of the metal weight that I'm having to deal with now. Oh god. Alright, so I'm gonna have Uxio move here and just check to see if he hears anything down these halls. Okay. Which literally, there was only one roll that I could get that was worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, so you see essentially steps leading downwards, and you see a hallway kind of curving off. Again, the whole place is kind of tilted, so, like, water is, like, dampness and whatever is going down this place, and it is diving a bit, but it's not, like, insane, and you do not hear anything. Uxio is actually going to look back at Renru and just... How how does this work with lack of and he's pointing at her tail? Because he's not sure how vulnerable she is to sliding in situations like this. I am able to swim, if that's what you're asking. No, uh, what stones are slick, so... I can move about on slippery surfaces. Not as well, but I can. Fair enough. There's possibility that this first hall might lead up just by merit of where it's at. The other one, I have a hard time believing it's going to get us anywhere that's not deeper. If anything, the walls also provide enough support for me. If I need something to grip. Wait, is there something... Amiko's, Amiko's, Amiko's just doing a religion check. check to make sure that you're not going to get jumped by more shadows. Yeah, she, she really can't tell. She's just looking uh, at the sarcophagus, and, like, the, the other three are kind of, like, shut tight, and the three that you guys did are, like, just ajar, just ever so slightly. Hex actually gonna move very slowly next to Amiko and try to do the same thing of making sure that we're all in the clear. Man, not that much better. Bella will, uh, do the same. <laughs> 13, uh, 13, 17. It's going up. All right, it survey is, says it is going up. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you get a nineteen just to just a plus two, plus two, plus two. 
All right, Zerdan, you actually just go up to like this one, and you just straight up open the sarcophagi, and the corpse in there seems at peace. You check the other ones, and with the ones that you got jumped, the corpses are were like thrashing, but this one. And essentially the ones that did not contain shadows, their corpses seem at peace. Okay. The ones who accepted their fates versus the ones who rebelled against them. Because mm-hmm. being buried alive sucks. I wouldn't know, and I'd rather not know. Do we do we really want to keep exploring or do we want to like go back? No. I no, think please. I think it's time to go back. There are stairs here. Do they lead up or down, Stuart? They lead down. These stairs lead down, though. And uh, do these ones lead down, or are they up? They also lead down. Both sets of stairs lead down. Mm-hmm. Ux, you. If you don't mind, I can barely move already because of that shadow. Hecht. I can't even carry my heavy shield. Heck, I understand. I was checking to see if either led up. We should Uh-oh. probably get out of Fred. here. For those who have been weakened, why don't you go back up to the barracks? I'm kind of okay as... Oh, wait. I can compensate Uh, if I need to. Um, yeah. If you want to keep exploring, you can. Mm -hmm. Uh, Considering two out of the party are not in the best of shape, I'm willing to take it easy just so that we can try to get some strength back, but I can keep going because I'm a dexterity-based fighter to where I fight with finesse and grace. All right. uh, I'm inclined to think we should head back up. Yep. Amiko will suggest a vote on whether the party should continue onwards or retreat to the safety of upstairs. So, all in favor... I. 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 Nay. I think someone's outvoted. <laughs> I think you're nuts. Amiko looks at Ranrua and says, "Listen, we're we're going to go. You you can explore if you want, but like, we can't help you." I have no uh, issue with sc- with scouting. I will get out before anything. It's too uh, troubling for me. Are you sure about that? Because we were lucky to see those shadows pop out at us, and who's to say there's more? Like, later I down can these... Tread care. I can tread lighter, more lightly than you think. Mm. Amiko is like, alright, so if you're, if you're wanting to scout, she casts Feather Step on you. Hmm. That will help. If you she has no you... feet. <laughs> you beat me to the joke. If you're really going to do this, here you go. Pass without trace, also. Yay! Um, I think Amiko is out of spells officially. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. She holds the wand and says, "I can, I could heal you up real quick, unless someone else has healing spells. That would be better." I'm just going to be resting the rest of this day. Let me just lay on hands. Oh, you insist. If you're going to be like that, then I won't use it. I'm being sarcastic, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. But, like, I'll, ta- I'll take the healing. There, yeah, I used all five of mine on you. <laughs> all five? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I don't think you needed to go. Yeah, too man. bad, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> Overloaded. Ranrua, Basically you... fully healed. Yeah. Fully healed. Alright, much appreciated. Okay. The party elects to stand back while mm-hmm. Ranrua scouts. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm genuinely curious to see how this goes. It might be interesting. You have dark vision, mm-hmm. so plunging yes. down into the darkness, you see eventually a door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dark vision of 60 feet, I think it I is. I think so, yes. Yes, yes it is. 60 feet of dark vision. We'll venture down this first hall first. Okay. You reach a stone door. 
Is there any particular markings on the door? There are none, actually. All right. Uh, we'll t uh, slowly open it. You slowly creak it open, and leading inside, you open the door and you see the stone floor and then water sloshing in. The sound of sloshing water fills the room, which is nearly collapsed entirely into a large tide pool. What few walls do remain intact here bear details of impressive carvings of incredible treasures filled to overflowing with coin, gems, jewelry, and other items of value. To the east, as in over here, mm -hmm. the walls depict a carving of a towering mountain, its peak carved in the shapes of a stern face just above a great palace. Below, the sides of the mountain's valley cradle an immense city of spires. There is a pool next to you. Yes. Hmm. Is the water moving, or is it basically just still water? The water is sloshing, as if water is, like, going in and out through, like, a, like a tide. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So, it's just depictions of treasure, but no... No actual items or loot in the You'll need to do a perception check to see in the waters, because that's a that's a okay. new thing. Gotcha. What be in the water? There's something. Ooh. Okay. In the pool, the remains of what must have once been an incredible treasury lie in the sloshing waters. Shattered urns, crumbled stone chests, rusted bits of once beautiful armor and weapons, and other long ruined treasures of ancient past lies below in the pool. Most impressive of them all is a large coral-encrusted helmet the size for a giant. The helm measures nearly five feet across, and its full-face guard bears an expression of twisted rage and fangs. The helm itself appears to be made of gold. Oh. It's gold, but covered in coral. I wouldn't be able to get away with that. And nothing seems useful enough. So we're just going to back out of here. While you were looking at this big old helmet, it okay. moved suddenly. And it starts inching its way towards you. Oh, no. Uh, d d no, I don't I don't like that. No, no, no. Let's get out of here and close the door. You don't want the giant, giant golden helmet? Mm, I, d I don't know. It, it started moving. That sounds like some mimicry. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the longer you look at it, you do eventually see it submerge. Mm. And it lifts up and instead, shiny! <laughs> oh no, it's a giant crab! It's a giant crab! It's a giant enemy crab! <laughs> Shit! But it's so shiny! Oh god. But is there a shining weak point? <laughs> Well, not that you see, and again, a giant hermit crab pops out of the water wearing a great golden helmet. What oh. You, what you doing? Don't want to back out of here. Okay. I'm not interested in this thing. You back out and slam the door shut, and yeah. you hear <laughs> as, as the crab slams on the door. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Not having that. Not allowing this thing. Are you going to do anything about the door? Because you feel like it may be made of stone, but it's not good stone. You feel me? No. <laughs> centuries, yeah, it's of, get away. centuries of being near water has not helped. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, just kind of make a run for it. Get out! Of, get the fuck out of here. Okay. All right, um, party. You see Ranrua book it out of <laughs> the area. Sing. What? What did you find? More than you can handle. Uh, there's a crab bearing a giant's helmet. Really? Hmm. That's the lie you come up with. There's worse things that when you When have I ever with. lied to you? You <laughs> lied to the entire town for five years. <laughs> well, there was no <laughs> lie when there was nothing to speak of. A <laughs> <laughs> giant helmet! Crashes through the secret door. <laughs> ah, son oh. of a attack of opportunity. <laughs> Not yet. 
Red Rua yeah. like flops forward on her belly as a crab emerges with a gigantic golden yet rusty. Actually, you can't rust, can it? It's gold. Yeah, <laughs> gold don't yeah. rust. It don't it don't do that. Either okay, way, it's... you guys see a gigantic 450 pound hermit crab armed. <laughs> that's an awfully specific weight. It, that's what it says. Mm hmm. Well, my initiative is 22. So we got good initiative, but it don't matter. And it, it goes to attack Ranrua. Oh, God, no. Slams down with a. No! What? Oh, syntax error. F you. Oh, no. <laughs> We're being saved by Rule 20 being crud. It clips through Ranrua's no, tail no, no, no. and hits it, the ground. Oh, it's versus crabs. Who will win? <laughs> <laughs> it slams on your tail. Uh, Snakes versus crabs. Place taking all bets, folks. Taking all bets. I feel like the bad person for the thought for the joke that popped into my head for versus crabs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ow! All right, it slams. You take ten damage on your tail, and then attempts ow. to grab you. Does Twenty-four combat maneuver beat your defense. That combat def. Where, where is it? Uh, There's no way it's over 24. Yeah, no. <laughs> My defense is 20. <laughs> it picks you up and like <laughs> in its claws and it crushes your tail for seven more sledgening, or er, sledgening, bludgeoning damage. Thanks to Sludge Kong. damage. Sludge damage. <laughs> and then like <laughs> this is this is way funnier. It then picks you up by your tail slams you like <laughs> like Hulk and Thor <laughs> or like I, I'd imagine that it just has like half of my tail and it's just slamming the end on the ground oh no it's like whipping you around like a kid with a snake who doesn't want it to bite it so you're being flung around by this giant crab <laughs> oh god how much damage do I have to take for this <laughs> well the second one another uh nine uh, God, no. Oh my God. You put me down to single digits. Well, and then it, it's got constrict again, but instead I'm going to have Ooh. use you as a weapon against Bella here. 21 does hit. All right, Bella, you are smacked as if you were hit by a bull rush. So I'm going to roll combat. You got smacked by the snake. You get flung back 10 feet and hit the wall for three damage. <laughs> ah! here, here comes the crab with the steel chair. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> this thing, which is decked out in gold and silver, is just whipping <laughs> Randru around like ah! a rope. God. And y'all thought I was lying. I... <laughs> I've seen Stranger! Alright, and it's Constrict Damage. I chose not to do that in order to do the Bull Rush against Bella. Bella, you're up. <sighs> Another round of Blood Rage. But, Bella's also going to reach for a deeper well of Primal Power and activate Primal Surge as well. Okay, that's a good move. Uh, and one mythic point. What's it do? It increases more strength. strength. Yeah, more strength, basically. Ella is now at normal strength. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so not only do Bella's wings appear as they usually do, but they begin burning with white fire as she moves up and takes a swing at the crowd. Bro, you hit it. <laughs> you should... It, it has plus two armor. <laughs> I love this crab. This is the dumbest boss. Looks like we found dinner. Ooh. Amiko Isn't points it? up as she, uh, well, she's- Are we going to have crab rangoon? Kill it. You can eat whatever you want, but absolutely. That sounds delicious. <laughs> All right. I that's my turn. I think it's in a show. Uxio always amusedly watching where everyone gets flung around. <laughs> She's used to putting those on. <laughs> <laughs> and for my actual turn, I'm first going to cast 
because I assume that Sun Metal has worn off by now. Absolutely. And then I'm gonna get up next to it, flanking with Bella. Primal what? Strike. I think that hits. Twenty-five definitely. I think hits. it hits hard. It sure do. That's a good. That's a good strike. You and <laughs> to finish it off, since the <laughs> combat maneuver, I'll try and disarm Renrua from it. <laughs> you disarm it, its weapon. Yes. Uh, disarm the claw. <laughs> its combat defense is twenty-three. Yeah, that makes sense. It, it's actually way better against trip too. Holy shit! Like, don't try to trip it. Well, I mean, it's got. Legs. I don't have any more mythic power after that, so. Radrua, you're up. <laughs> you're, currently, okay. you're currently being flung around. I'm gonna try to uh, respond by struggling its arm with my tail. I'm going to say. I... It, well, okay, yeah, it's just gonna be tricky, but yeah, sure, go for mm -hmm. it. Uh, uh, probably not. <laughs> It did not work. Yeah, no. It did not work. I don't that uh, no, I'm pretty sure there's no way I could make that roll work. <laughs> <laughs> Amiko seeing you flung around like crazy is is just going to like draw the cure wounds and attempt to run up and slap you with it. So she has to make an attack roll <laughs> to touch you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Which is easy for you. <laughs> Well, okay. uh, that does work. Okay, the yeah, attack yeah, roll. Work. The attack roll works. Mm -hmm. Problem is, she didn't. She could not and did not attack defensively, because you're you're technically attached to the creature. Yeah. Oh no. Right, but Amiko's unless that thing has reach, it wouldn't Amiko be out of range? No, no, no. She has apparently Ranru is a reach weapon. Ranru is a reach weapon now. Ranru is yeah, not a reach weapon. No. <laughs> 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 Although you'd think she would be. Ah. No, the crab is probably grabbing me at, like, the halfway point. <laughs> oh, goody. I don't think that hits Amiko. It does not. Amiko runs up. The crab attempts to attack of opportunity her, but Amiko mm -hmm. jumps on its other weaker claw, leaps up into mm -hmm. the air, and strikes you with your moderate w wounds. Yay! Zerdan, you're up. Recalling my knowledge of crabs, do I know if these things have combat reflexes at all? Roll, I guess roll nature, roll yeah. Roll nature, yeah. <laughs> so, 24. Knowledge nature. It does not have combat reflexes. <laughs> Good, then I can just... It's, one, it, two, Even though it's wearing armor, it is not a warrior three, crab. Four, five, to get behind it and attempt to get flanking with Rua, who is... Awkwardly in everything. You, I don't think you can you get can, flanking you with Ranrua. You cannot get Ren, You cannot get flanking with a grappled creature. Damn it! No, All right. But I think I'll... he would have flanking with the Mako from right. Crab's not too big. We, yeah, weirdly enough, it, it says giant hermit crab, but it's technically a medium creature, which is very bizarre. Well, All consider right. how small the typical hermit crab is. I mean, I guess that makes sense. All right, yeah. nine points of piercing damage. Mm, sure do. All right. Uh, let's move poor Renrua again. <laughs> <laughs> you stab it right in the ass for nine piercing. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. You hit it. We you hit its weak point. <laughs> you hit its weak point for massive damage. Woo! Hecht, what you doing? Hecht, that's what he wanted to move. Going to put away the scimitar, grab the rancer, and poke at it. Eh. Right. Nah. You stab across the aisle, and all it <laughs> you get parried by this crab who's now like adopting Zerdan's like fencing pose and it's oh slapping at you with Renrua. <laughs> eh. And that will be turn. The crab, seeing a new challenger approach, will take a five foot step <laughs> and slam. <laughs> And it will slam Hecht with Ranrua. Ah! <laughs> you two just kind of like bump into each other. Yes, do it. Was that 14 an attack roll? That 14 was an attack roll, yes. Uh, Because I don't have my heavy shield. That actually does match my AC. Oh. Well, all right then. 
This is uh, fun. This has been a fun uh, <laughs> Red Rua, you slam down into Hex. <laughs> and I'm going to roll combat maneuver. Okay, here's what I'm doing. So... Hect and Ranrua, each of you take five instead of the ten. Okay. But Hect, you are knocked prone. Fair. It will then pick up Ranrua again and slam <laughs> and slam down on Hect. Oh no. Each of you take five again. Ow. I'm pretty what? sure this is not what they mean when they say hot girl on girl action. <laughs> <laughs> I also rolled the constrict damage. I'm going to have it split uh, between you two. I rolled 18 total constrict damage. We're going to split it between you two. Uh, oh my god. It is just... <laughs> this this thing, crab is insane. This crab is feral. Oh my it's, god. It's so many attacks. <laughs> so many attacks. It gets two attacks plus grab and constrict. It, it's actually kind Ooh. of crazy. Bella, you're up. All right, do I have flanking with Amiko right now? I think, yes, with that angle you do. All right, then. We're going to try and finish this with a power attack. Okay. 22 to hit, 21 damage. 22 hits and 21 damage. Yep, you... <laughs> tired of these mother fighting snakes <laughs> on your, your Monday to Friday paladin. You absolutely crush this thing. And the helmet goes flying off as it drops Ranrua. You wail on it a bit more as it eventually stops moving. <laughs> God damn. That was, okay. that was brutal. Well, well that's, that's a story to tell all of our grandchildren. Bella looks at Ranrua. Okay. You want to go back now? Please get off. <laughs> Oh, finish me for it. No, just please get off. You're heavy, and I'm already very weak at the moment. Uh, uh, come yes, on, Renra, Renra, I know you got strength. She will. <laughs> yes, she will. Renra is actually going to go to the claw that she was being held by. Basically, grab like each pincer and try to rip it in two. Amiko's like, well, we, we could actually... <laughs> no, that's our dinner. You could... You could... Wait. And I want some now. You could roll some. You know, while she's doing that, Uxio's gonna just look over the helmet. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you are so f tired and fatigued. Yeah. You're just like impotently like, stupid f crab. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so looking over the helmet... This is a funny fight. <laughs> like, this is... I, I read it directly, like, as the book had it. Really? The book had it so that the snake person went running away? I mean, well, you... What the crab was intended to do. <laughs> that you... All right, you do check the helmet. It is a helmet the size of you, made of solid gold. It is heavy, son of a... Like, Bella moved it because, you know, she was inspired by, mm -hmm. like, divine strength. But, yeah, like, you moving it yourself is going to be tricky. Is it magical at all, according to Detect Magic? Um, no. The helmet does not seem to be magical. All right. A part of me was hoping it was because then it would shrink down if someone wore it. Um, however, um, Bella pokes at it again and she moves it. It will do perception. At 20. <laughs> Your heart sinks. It's not gold. It's bronze. Ow. It's bronze. Still, though. Oh. That's, that's a lot, lot of metal. That's, yeah, that's an impressive amount of metal, regardless. Yeah, uh, that does that does bum you out a little bit. Probably still worth something. Yeah. Especially How with the mind press through the doors. Well, it's, it's a medium sized helmet, right? Yeah, people sized. So, it's the size of a person, so it could be yes. moved. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a pain because it's heavy, obviously. It's a pain. crown, right? Can we Just turn it on its side and roll it? Here. <laughs> you want to roll it upstairs. No, it's it carrying it. It was downstairs. You determined <laughs> that the hull is it is 300 pounds of, of basically bronze. So that means that 
We have 150 pounds of crab meat to go through. No, no, no. The helmet is 300 pounds. The but the crab is 450 pounds, meaning there's 150 pounds of crab meat. That's a good point. Amiko's like, listen, we can sell that helmet, but first, why don't we use the helmet to cook our crab? Mm. Here, here. <laughs> All right, if it's I, 400 some odd pounds total, um, I'm not sure we can like, build a fire that will support it. Now Amiko's a little excited. It's like, okay, first of all, this is kind of a challenge. Second of all, she whips out her knapsack and then like, <laughs> like whips out a chef apron and puts it on. <laughs> go get some, go get some furniture, and we'll build a bonfire around it. She tells Bella and Uxio, all right, I need you guys to tilt it on its side and then we'll build the fire around it but mm. essentially yeah you could just fill up the helmet and cook the crab in it should we just okay. use all those candles that we got no <laughs> those are worth money heat. oh yeah. fine there's plenty of yeah, we can go yeah there's, plenty yeah, there's of tables. tables back there there might be some stuff in the room where nualia was mm. true Hex Oops, no taps his foot on the ground um is the wetness of the floor going to be an issue not for me. Amiko smiles confidently. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just simply make a grease fire of the furniture. Uh, I don't think you want a grease fire that could possibly spill out onto us. So, let me try and How see. How good of an idea is a fire underground in a crypt like this? Yes. It's actually got a very <laughs> high ceiling in the crypt. Mm -hmm. Oh, fair enough. And there's plenty uh, that... of air. She says, we will need water, though. Ranrua, I assume down there there's water? Yes, there is. There, there was uh, quite a large pool in the room that I found with that that thing came out of. Well, let's make sure that there's no others. Uxio and Bella, why don't you go together? Make sure there's no other giant crabs. All right. Actually, is it that way or this way? I don't know hall. which one she went down. You want to check that First one? Hall. Like this one? Sure. I like how they don't even hear. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do I come to? You come to, a, you come to a, a, like a rotten wooden door. You just kind of push open. Oh, they, they both go to the same place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I see hey. anything interesting here beyond its natural shape? Yes. Before you uh, answer that, I'm, I'm going to call down the hall. Bella, you see anything? Bella pokes her head around the corner. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You look down in the the slopping waters, and there is actually stuff there. I don't like how you said that. I don't care. <laughs> what do my ASMR eyes see? Your ASMR eyes see. I'm, I'm looking for the treasure. All right. All right. You look down, and the pool is kind of deep. But you can see several small chests of gold and silver. There's also some precious stones down there. And you see, like, a small locket with a, like... Yeah, essentially, yeah, there's treasure down there. You'll just have to go get it. So, quick check. One of my animal focus, Frog, normally adds plus four to swim and acrobatics checks to jump. Are we still applying that since we reduced all of the checks? Yeah, no. If it's specifically swimming, you get the bonus. It's it's just all right. It's just athletics. And I want to take your armor off first. I was about to say Uxio is going to hit. Oh, that's a knife. <laughs> Uxio <laughs> drops his armor on the floor. Well, I, he actually can. That is the benefit of an armored coat. Okay. Putting it on, taking it off, one move action. All right. Also, take off my buckler. And then, yeah. looks like there's a good hunk of loot down there. Yep. So Uxio is basically just in his pants now, and because we made climb into the acro, I need to the athletics, which I assume includes swim. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll swim down to retrieve stuff. Yep. Um... Bella will. Um, mm -hmm. It'll take her some time, but she'll take off her breastplate before going in to assist. Uh, no. It takes some oh. time, but you eventually, between the two of you, exhume all the treasures. It takes about, let's see, 3d6 minutes, so. I'm assuming we tell everyone what we're doing first. 
Right, now they're just walking and see both of us without clothes on. Belle's not naked. She's just taken off the armor parts of her clothes. Yeah, Belle is not lewd. Gosh. Gross. So eventually, like, communication happens. You realize that most of the danger has passed. Uh, Zerdan, I'm assuming you're helping Amika with the fire and stuff. <coughs> yeah, I guess I'll roll uh, knowledge history to help with cooking unless uh, she has a recipe that she has in mind. She's made seafood before. All right, so linguistics for recipes. Okay. 32 to assist. Okay. Between the two of you, you eventually managed to get a fire going. Hect and Ranrua are like, what are you guys doing? Hect, while they are getting that fire ready, is Tess slowly, exhaustedly taking all of her armor off just to get it off her. You, you kind of collapse into the corner a bit. As you are just relaxing, Amiko just hands you her rolled up bedroll so you have a pillow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I think Runro would basically just be coiled in on herself, clearly exhausted. Okay. Well, the athletic characters eventually exhume all of the treasure. Would you like a detailed list? Sure. <laughs> All in all, inside this room, you find... Da, 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 you uncover 3,500 silver pieces. Ooh. 630... Oh, sorry. That's 350 gold. 630 gold pieces. 40, 630? Yep, sorry. 630 gold. 40 precious stones worth 10 gold points each. So another 400 gold. All right. And you find a jade amulet that you're not sure what it does. I can look at it with tech magic, just in case it is magical. It's got a faint transmutation aura. It is, in fact, made of jade. It is quite beautiful, actually. Looks like a bit of a, like a teardrop thing going on. Would there be any objection to the idea that in order to make carrying things easier, Uxio just put it on while underwater? the amulet yeah like in order to still have his hands free for other stuff he put the amulet up on while underwater grabbed the other stuff and then swam up yeah um yep you didn't feel any adverse effects all right perception check Wait. to see if you kind of notice what happened when you put it on since you've unlocked your like vampiric abilities you notice that your skin has become toughened and hardened with like almost like stony vampire flesh and it does seem that wearing this amulet makes that a little bit tougher. Almost like Ooh. maybe my natural armor was increased? It could be, could be. Maybe, maybe by like a plus one or something like that, you know? I, it's just a guess. It's just a guess. You, yeah, just a guess. If you had to put a number to it, it feels like, an, you know, like a natural armor plus one bonus, you know. A natural armor amulet. We'll haul up all the goods as well as uh, the water for the crab. All right. You guys spend essentially like at least an hour or two doing this. The crab is going between Zerdan and Amiko. They manage to like shove this thing into the makeshift pot. They add a whole bunch of like Cajun-esque spices. And before long, you are smelling wonderfully spicy and buttery crab. Mm-hmm. How did you transport that much butter? A girl has her ways, Uxio. Now sit down and get in. Get, get, grab the crackers. You reach into your backpack and, like, lo and behold, there are crab crackers there. It's like, wh why would you expect this? <laughs> more, more, moreover, why are they in your bag? <laughs> exactly what I was just thinking. I'm waiting for, like, Sheriff Hemlock or, and some others to come in here wondering what's happened to us, and they just find us sat around this giant pot. <laughs> I think that, you know what, I think that's I, that's funny enough to work, yeah. <laughs> the crab is ready. It has been divvied up among you guys. There's still extra because 150 pounds of crab. <laughs> Likely half, at least half of that would be shell, but yeah, you're still looking at a significant portion of meat. Weirdly, yeah. though, like crab carapace, crab armor doesn't weigh that much. 
-hmm. All things considered. Fair Ooh. enough, then. Though, it's still a matter of the square cubed law. True. Oh, that's true, too, yeah. <laughs> Eventually. We'll say 20, yeah, we'll say 20 pounds of armor and over 100 pounds of meat. Eventually, uh, everyone comes downstairs and it's being, like, pointed by Smokey. And you see, like, a small regiment like, of, like, <laughs> of your friends. They're all... They're all on guard. They've been look. They're worried. They've been looking for us. Uxio points at the heavily injured Renrua and pecked. Smokey nods and just starts like bum 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 bum. Oh boy! Here we go. He reaches into a knapsack and like pulls out some potions of cure wounds, but it's not like. It's it's not like a little vial. It's more like a giant keg. <laughs> and he just starts tipping it in your mouth. I half expected you to say that was a honey jar. <gasps> Why didn't I think that? <laughs> okay, retcon. Yeah, retcon. It's a honey jar. You know what? This is one of the few times Stuart actively retcons. <laughs> he, reaches uh, in yes. with, he reaches in with a giant humanoid hand, of course. Mm -hmm. Scoops out like a... A long, big old handful. Big old handful of cure light wounds and just rubs it on your face. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh God. <laughs> Boy, I guess this means that anyone who kisses it. Sugar. You are healed six for the honey of cure light wounds. <laughs> okay. It's better than nothing. He then gives you a head pat with his gigantic honeyed oh, hands. God. Oh, I... <laughs> God, why, why must it be so embarrassing for him? <laughs> he takes out another glob and rubs it on Heck's face. <laughs> Thank you, Smokey. You're honestly the best human winks out of anyone I know. He does that, like, aw shucks motion. <laughs> like, <"Ooh." laughs> Oh, God, I, I love this stupid game. You're right. <laughs> oh, okay. Eventually, though, you guys meet up. You explain the situation. When you get to the death of the various individuals and, like, who you're keeping captive and whatnot, Hemlock mm -hmm. just, like, nods. Hemlock <laughs> does note, though, he says, so you're saying that one of their lieutenants is upstairs in their room? Actually, two, because it's some mercenary and a researcher that uh, Nualia hired, I guess. He nods, um, says, we'll need to look into it and see if there's an active warrant in their hometown. If it's serious enough, we may need to extradite. Uh, I'm not sure how well you'll do for the mercenary, since apparently he's from Riddleport. He just makes note and says, we'll take into account that they, he switched sides at the last moment and assisted you, which is huge. But there's a good chance he may still need to face justice for what he's done. Yeah, I'll be sure to take responsibility for any community service or such he wishes to do on behalf of the town, then. He nods. Like, everyone's kind of relaxing and celebrating. Like, Evan, you know, Evan's being a bro for Bella. Oh, yes, totally relaxing over here, not dying of strength falls. But either way, you guys do share a giant crab, and for the record, it is delicious. Uh, turns out Zerdan's kind of a natural cook, and even Amiko's like, she's not mad or jealous, but she's like, hmm. Impressive. <laughs> uh, I kind of do have experience cooking on a ship, but as I kind of like... <laughs> you're moving jumping. in on my turf. So what you're saying is that you've got experience with seafood and not much else. Now she's thinking, she's like, is he more expensive as a chef or as a sheriff? <laughs> or a deputy? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to say the needs of Sandpoint comes first, and I'm sure there's a lot of work to do around here, especially with possibly new citizens and dealing oh, out. Feeding the citizens isn't a need? Oh, uh, you know what I mean, especially since we've got new people coming in from town, especially 
all the little goblins and cages that we gotta take back. And make sure that nothing happens. I'd say if anything is part of this scene, like, Rudra gets the whole claw that she wanted, and is just digging right into it with her hand. <laughs> do a strength check. I want to see if, like, <laughs> if, like, you can still do it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shaylee is... You know that helpful anime smile mm -hmm. that, like, mm -hmm. like girls do? And it's mm -hmm. really cute. She basically is, like, crab-cracking the things for you and just putting it in your bowl. Mm -hmm. Either way, Thistletop is secured. You guys have won, and you've completed Chapter 1. Yay! Yay! Oh, God, now we gotta talk to everyone in town thing about how we got the Thistletop. <laughs>